Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce uh, one of the um, leaders uh, of the Nigerian community, one of the key leaders of the Nigerian community in this country, a guy that has been an activist, a guy that has always been on the side of his people, come rain, come shine. A professor, a man that have done so well in this country and encouraged others to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to bring him to the podium, Dr. Stanley Onye. Good afternoon. Um, let me start by, by thanking the conveners of this event this afternoon. <clears throat> and also thank my good friend Zubi, who invited me to this event. Incidentally, I did not want to come alone. I brought a prominent community leader in Chief OBTK. Thank you for coming with me. And uh, I will also thank uh, Dr. Idio Paruji. He used to be here with us until he relocated to a better, colder place. Eddie, welcome to Washington, D.C. Again, I know you're always here with us. I know during the Nareko days, we used to support you, Saturday morning meetings in your house. But what I want to tell the international community is that injustice has been done to Imo State. Anybody that has traveled to Imo State recently, uh, let's assume since he had became the governor. I still call him the governor because I find it difficult to say former governor. Because if you've been in Imo State during this Christmas time, you'll find out that most structures have started functioning again. People were taking weekend visits to Imo State just to relax because they know that's a state that will offer them protection, will offer them government services, and will offer them peace. But I think that is fizzling away now because uh, we have somebody that supposedly is a 419er, as we say it. I'm not even sure he will be able to come into this country. Uh, if his visa is still valid, I'm sure it will not be renewed after this time. One of the reasons why I'm standing here, I'm Stanley Onye. Uh, I was a, a, a professor of government for almost 27 years at various universities. I'm now um, a professor of government for a consulting company. Let me go back to my days at University of Maryland. When somebody said, uh, you are from Nigeria, I said, yes. Why are you studying? Why are you teaching American government? Why don't you go home and you know, teach Nigerian government? I said, because America is where it starts. Nigeria copies American system. That always sticks in my mind. That's exactly why we are so passionate about this. President Buhari came into office, and the very first thing he said was, I am going to fight corruption. And we took him up, said yes, and there's a certain stigma that we attach to some of them that we consider semi-corrupt. So we say, yes, he's going to be able to do it. But I don't think that that corruption is working very well. If this type of justice is allowed to stand, then there is massive corruption in the country. In other words, I'm from Imo State. I've been to Imo State. And most of the resources that we accumulate here, we send to Imo State. We have people here that have renewed confidence in Imo State since in the Yohan's administration. To sit down and see that fizzle away, to see the massive road construction that was going on, to see the pensioners being paid, 
to see teachers being paid. For the first time, I've been back to Nigeria, and my brother, whom I send money to, a retired school teacher, was able to invite me to his home, cook, brought all kinds of drinks. I said, ah, where did you get this money? We just got paid. Never heard that for a long time. And people were smiling, people were happy. In other words, to have Supreme Court reverse this, as the Supreme Court experts, the Bruces, as they are called, have told us here, there's remedy for this. Remedy in, in the fact that we in the international community are calling on the Supreme Court to please review the case and reverse yourself. Review this case and reverse yourself. That action will be able to bring credibility back to the courts that we consider our last line of defense. If that is not done, the court, again, is going to be categorized as a political party. And I don't think that will all go well for the country. Imo State is the starting point. The relative peace in Imo State now is the hope that people think that this will be reversed. We have confidence that it will be reversed. Because we've been taught for a long time that two plus two is four and not five. For a long time, we've been taught that. And we want two plus two to equal four in Imo State. You know, the critical thing here is that Imo State is the heartland of the Ibo land. Anything that happens in Imo State happens to the Ibo race. That's how we are taking it. That's why most of the Igbo politicians everywhere in the world are condemning this decision. They don't see it as an affront to the to Igbo state. They see it as an affront to the entire Igbo community. Civil war was not good for any country, but we don't want this government to invite another civil war. This decision has the potential of in igniting something that the government will not be able to handle. We in the international community are asking the government to lend its credibility to the Supreme Court so that the Supreme Court can review this case and offer a good solution. We are even ready, I know. Some people might say, oh, why are you asking for that? Supreme Court can order a rerun in those 388 so-called units. And I can bet you, if that happens, in here, your hand will win. It's an injustice for you to consider what is currently going on without taking into account the overall decision of the people. What this has done is to tell us that, hey, election does not matter anymore in Nigeria except the Supreme Court decision. And this, we don't want to be the order of day in Nigeria. So I want the international community to also know United States, France, Japan, wherever it is, to know that we are not taking this line down. We will make sure that if this does not stand, as the previous uh, presenter said, we are going to lobby for sanction of all the members of the Supreme Court. We are going to sanction, we are going to lobby for sanction of even APC as a political party individuals that lead APC. So what we are asking here is that, yes, this might not be the corruption from State House. It might not be. I can give the president benefit of doubt that maybe he's not aware of this. We, we will give him that benefit of the doubt. But we want him to come out credibly to condemn this rape. If he does not do that, then the, the, the uh, sovereignty will convert on him we can also ask for him to give us back the sovereignty. So what I am telling everybody here is that the community is aware and the community is not taking this lying down. The community is learning his voice to ask the Supreme Court to take a step back, review your decision, and restore the right mandate to him. Thank you very much.